I'll just wait to wait for things to go live. Awesome. I think we're good. Let me just double check my audio. Amazing. Um, almost forgot to put my glasses on. Believe it or not, I was signed out. I, I had everything ready and I got signed out two seconds before I started this live stream. So I was fumbling for that. Um, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we study top Kaggle solutions every week as part of a study group. Uh, we try to understand what the top teams are using on different competitions and we try to learn from them to possibly apply in our local pipelines or future competitions. Uh, this is a part of a community effort by HRU.ti if you'd like to be a part of a future community that we're building with hopefully more Kaggle content and uh, hopefully more grandmasters appearing on the screen. Uh, you can go to this link or scan this QR code. Uh, everyone's welcome, of course. Let me put that link in the chat. And so I find the correct app and um, get this tab out of the way. So I wanted to start by a quick refresher on uh, what segmentation is. And I was going to use uh, the hydrogen torch tool, which also has been created by literally one of the best of the best Kaggle Grandmasters, people like Philip Singer, Yawen, uh, Babakin, Dimitri Goldreef. So I was going to use this. Uh, as an opportunity to just refresh everyone, uh, everyone's memory of semantic segmentation, and then we'll move on to the competition. So usually how these study groups go is I spend the first few minutes just uh, setting up the context for the problem, and then we go about understanding from the top solutions what, what this really is. So what I've done here is I'm looking at the dashboard, and I'm trying to switch between a lot of tabs. Um, I've imported the fashion image uh, data set, which has the following labels, shoes, pants, dress, I think coat and the other few ones are, are, are there as well. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to remind everyone what are the different uh, forms of backbones you can select, what common architectures are used, and we'll use this as a base reminder to understand what can we potentially apply in this competition and what new things are there to learn. So as you can see, uh, I've loaded this data set up and instead of visualizing everything in a Jupyter notebook, I can already see the labels here. I can see that uh, the label code has been identified correctly, pants and shoes, everything is loaded up correctly. Um, interesting, I, I didn't know bags aren't a part of it. So maybe that's not the case. I can't, I can't detect the purse here as well. Maybe they aren't a part of the uh, data set. Interesting. And I can also look at the number of examples here and also how many um, validation uh, examples have I set aside for this case I haven't. And we'll be using the RLA, RLE mask for this problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an experiment and run it on one fold. And I'm again feeling adventurous. So I'll go to the master setting. And I'll just create one fold so that we can get a get a faster feedback. It's a three channel uh, image. I would say let's do ImageNet normalization. Um, maybe let's try hard augmentations. Does I don't know. Does anyone have any suggestions? Should we try a mix up or cut mix? Anyone in the chat? While I wait for the chat to answer that, I'll continue selecting other settings. So I'm just asking if you all have any suggestions for the parameters to select here. Um, maybe for backbone as well, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like trying um, efficient at B5, why not? And let's use the BC loss function here with RMW. And I would like to try differential learning rates. So again, as a reminder, differential learning rates divides your uh, model into different groups. So layers closer to the input uh, versus ones that are in the middle versus the end, the end ones all get different learning rates. And the understanding is closer to the input, 
whatever your layers have learned that doesn't need to change so much so you can set a smaller learning rate there and towards the output again this these are weights that have been downloaded and pre-trained on imagenet so you are changing these or you are fine tuning these towards your target problem so the weights towards the outermost layers get a higher learning rate and the ones towards the input get a smaller learning rate so that's what we're setting here we're also applying it to the encoder decoder and also the head here and if you uh, again if you need a refresher for that there are different architectures and different backbones you can select so uh, you could have an efficient b with like a uh, unit like i i think i'll i'll go with this one or you could also have unit plus plus different uh, you can again it's it's all experimental and all of these are different options that you have to try and experiment so you could have the architecture as unit plus plus let's let's go with that for the sake of this continued example and i saw in the chat that uh, pushkar is suggesting mix up shake is suggesting cut mix so um <laughs> i'll go with cut mix sorry pushkar um let's see what other things can we change here i'll train this for five epochs uh, do you want some weight decay let's set it to 0.11 why not uh the metric would be dice and i can i let's run horizontal flip test time augmentation and i'll keep mix precision training on so i'll let this run and i've already run another another experiment so what's uh, happening here is hydrogen torch is actually training all of these models and as you can see it's it's quite convenient because you can just click through different things now going back to the model i can see all of these examples that are there in the data set so if i wanted to i could just look at these keep refreshing these keep going through the samples to get a feel for what the data set is like and then i can also get a insight on random examples or what are the best examples where we're performing really well or worst examples so uh what i wanted to show here is we've understood a bunch of the architectures that are possible to be used here uh, we've looked at a few different um examples of models you could train so for example you could have a re resonant backbone you could have efficient backbone and now i'm going to use this as a baseline to show what other things can be learned on top of this for the competition that we're going to look at today and this experiment's already going so as you can see uh this is the learning rate being changed so we used the cosine uh, learning rate and as you can see i i painfully remember cosine from high school and this graph i think looks somewhat similar to that as you can see it now it wouldn't go to zero but uh, even this slight change is i think uh, drastic enough for for your model to learn a lot of things so now i'll switch sharing screens again and go to the kaggle competition so that was a very quick refresher on uh, segmentation problems a uh, few things to remember there are different backbones you can use there are different architectures we can use usually dice uh, is a good coefficient you could also have bce loss i think for this competition many people use bce loss and we'll keep digging into that as we go through the top solutions so hopefully i'm sharing the right screen I'm again a bit shaken today because I was logged out last second. <laughs> I'm still trying to get a hold of things. Um, Alexi is asking if there is hyperparameter optimization. I could turn that on for the tool that I was showcasing. It's called Hydrogen Torch. Uh, for the sake of just running that example, and as you can see, uh, the experiment was already twenty percent through. I did not enable that. So you could also do a complete grid search if you wanted. Let me put the link to that. in the chart and so i learn how to type correctly um hydrogen toast <laughs> the first link should have come up but it did not so i'm going to put the link like so uh alexi you can find more details about it here i won't go into them for the sake of today's topic So uh the competition is called Hubmap plus HPA hacking the human body and the goal was 
as you can see segmenting multi organ functional tissue units ftus as it's been referred to multiple times in the write ups now there are there were quite a few interesting discussions uh throughout the competition that there might be a shake up so shake up is when you are performing really well on public leaderboard and then you fall down in the private leaderboard which happens to me regardless of the data set but for for this competition many people are worried that there would be a big data a uh, big shake up because as the organizers described the split between the public and private leaderboard uh there was a scare of having a nice difference between these two which uh, actually did not happen so there wasn't a shake up and i believe heng uh, the famous grandmaster was always sharing a lot of ideas actually predicted that there wouldn't be a big shake up this time and that did not happen so the goal as i mentioned here is to be able to segment different functional tissues across five human organs and we you task with building a model using a data set of tissue section images with the best submission segmenting ftus as accurately as possible now these were being evaluated by the dice coefficient i won't go into what that is that is quite straight forward for segmentation and is usually used taking a look at the data tab again uh, for images the sizes aren't misleading so uh, usually you can get a good feel of the size is quite quite large it's uh, it's it's really going to be a scary competition but for segmentation you have to also be careful about the image sizes so i'll i'll just start going through that but uh, there were a bunch of discussions around how to effectively work with these and how can you navigate those so you provide it with the run length uh encoded mask so the rle mask and some metadata about the patient as well not a lot as you can see inside of the training uh data set they say you can so for sorry for the test data set you can expect 550 images and all of these are of 3000 by 3000 size and the tissue area is within this size so the first example or the first thing that comes to mind is of course crop into this or just uh, focus on to this area you are also provided with annotations in the format that define the boundaries of the polygon mass of the tissues so what i'm going to do next is i'm going to go through a bunch of discussions that have actually set up or explained all of these tasks so yasin always has this famous post that he titles some insights and he usually gives really good starting points so i'm going to use this and i'll remember to upload it so he says this is a medical segmentation competition focused on locating functional tissue units for each input image the task is to predict a binary mask of whether there is a tissue or not so one or zero then he explains the uh, metric and the loss functions i'm not going to go into depth uh, but he suggested and I, i i think a few other people have also suggested you should use bc loss so they discussed that you could also have loss is uh, sorry this <laughs> this loss is loss and i i assumed uh, that's what they've explained they have done that in the above line i should i should remember how to read properly so they say uh, you could add this to bc loss this was done in a few earlier competitions as well so furthermore again this this is all experimental so you need to actually uh, test and see what works best for here i think uh, top teams ended up using bc loss if i remember correctly not all of them have posted their solution yet but a bit of teaser that bc loss might be the way to go for this one if i remember correctly uh the next thing to point out is all images contain at least one ftu so no empty images and they say training data comes from one source the public test is a mix of two sources and the private testing is only second 
source so here's where everyone was kind of scared about the shake up as you can see there's a weird split across the public and private leaderboards and which of course uh, makes everyone scared a little so inside of the metadata you have different organs five unique organs to be exact that you need to segment and here are the counts for all of these so you could you need to identify prostate uh, spleen lung kidney or large in intestine and uh, there are different distribution of the lens as you can see most of these are of 3 to uh, sorry of 3000 by 3000 size and even then the size variance isn't a lot so sometimes in competition there's a huge size variation and then you have to figure out if uh, you either crop or resize all of them into one size or how do you handle that for here i think it's a good assumption just to assume that all images are 3000 by 3000 more or less um pixel size denotes the height or width of a single pixel in micrometers so this is specific to uh, when you're working with tissue uh, tissue or uh, data related to scans of tissues you also have the tissue thickness to tell you the thickness of the biopsy sample and then you have the age uh, which you can see a distribution of and also the gender it's slightly skewed uh, so two thirds male and one thirds female next they have taught you how to plot the rle and there are a few other discussions here i think that's uh, that's all i wanted to cover from here again they've given a few starting suggestions so you could either have a they suggest uh, that you could either have a model for everything or one model per organ type now i'm trying to remember if there was a submission limit there was so your models need to run under 9 hours which means you can train your models offline and then you need to upload your weights to kaggle and then i i like making this joke because it's annoying and then you realize you're out of the 100 gig memory so so you delete your older data sets and then you start over again uh, and then after you've been able to get through that uh, your submission or your inference code needs to run inside kaggle kernels which usually have a slower gpu than your local one in under 9 hours so that's what this requirement refers to okay uh, so that's i think a good baseline of what this problem is let's see if there are any eda kernels open up here yes so derian uh, recently became a grandmaster in discussions and i think they're already a grandmaster in notebooks if i'm not wrong yes and they have absolutely awesome discussions and uh, notebooks i'm going to use his notebook to go through uh, setting up the problem statement so he again explains what you need to solve the pro uh, solve here for the five functional tissues that exist the background uh, info that what is hub map as an institute doing what is hp as an institute hpa as an institute doing you can go through all of this i'm just going to cover the meaty details then he explains the dice coefficient uh, and the submission file format so again uh, you need to indicate the value 0 that the pixels are not masked or the value 1 that the pixels are masked so the mask should be binary and this is the example of how the submission file should look like next he covers the dataset overview so annotations are again in rle format and the images are 16 bit gray scale png format scrolling down further I think after this they plot some uh, images just an example so I'm trying to get to that to show everyone what they look like So I'll scroll past everything all of the helper function code So here's a scan of a kidney and I would pretend that this looks like a kidney <laughs> I trust they didn't to plot the correct image um so they have plotted with a mask overlay here and this is sort of what the images look like here's another example of large intestine 
intestine and as you can see the blue uh, overviews are the segmentation of the intestine so earlier here i believe the pink uh, did the pink um should i say mass or plots maybe plots is plot the right word here so the pink pink plots here uh, are the kidney if i understand correctly and here the blue plots are the large intestine being detected uh, same for lung here i don't know what's going on so i'll skip this image um maybe this is a better one so this is for prostate and as you can see it's just right here in the corner so this is what the training images look like and is an example of the original rgb image that they have also plotted uh, after this they show how many number of mass are present per organ and the distribution of that the distribution of image sizes so i'll skip all of this uh, followed by number of segmentation mass per age by organ type so as you can see the largest uh, number of examples are right around this group the age group of 60 to 80 which kind of makes sense uh, as you get older you have to get more tests than uh, which isn't usually right uh, i i'm not trying to make a general statement here but it kind of makes sense that as you get older you probably need to get more scans and get tested more regularly followed by this uh, they show more examples of the segmentation images and a few more plots i'll skip all of these so i just wanted to give a feel of what the data looks like and continue from there so i'll close this tab now now i'll cover the standard tricks that were discussed um during the competition so what did the uh, what the top solutions are referring to this is just to provide context for that i've again gone through all of them ahead of time so i just want to set the stage up for all of these points uh i'd like to start by pointing this discussion out where uh, gunes actually says that they usually like to he usually likes to write his own code from scratch and usually he doesn't refer to public notebooks and he says that he knew that rle mass are supposed to be transposed but he didn't know what you supposed to do while submitting so <laughs> the score was really low and when he transposed the predictions he got a 0.7 plus public score so the uh, takeaways yes you should write your own code but also pay close attention to public notebooks and remember to learn from them and i also really really like this comment by hang so i'll let everyone read this all right continuing further human learning from scratch i'm i aspire to get to human learning from scratch soon soon <laughs> um darian has again shared a few external data source a few data sources uh this was the previous hub map competition so this is the second time hub map is running a competition on kaggle uh he suggests you could look at the previous uh data set as well but that is what's the data set you can go and take a look hub map also apparently has a portal and you can download images i assume that's what they're suggesting you can go and download images from there um usually you have to also be very careful with if the competition allows external data and then you have to check out if uh, the competition's license sorry the data sets license allows you to reuse it in a competition so those are always things to look out for uh, in a cattle competition i think the top teams used a few more data sets so i'm trying to just hunt for them if i can see their names here um hang had some insights so uh, folks were discussing what data set should you use so they pointed out and these are also minor things that you have to be careful about all tissue data used in this competition is from healthy donors 
so uh, heng suggested that you would you should try non cancer tissues first uh, because i assume most of the scans available as data sets would be related to cancer patients or otherwise i might be wrong about this but uh, that's one thing to look out for as if this competition is going on so that was that was one thing you should have looked out for if you were competing on this um this was more for my understanding so i leave this discussion as it uh, they had discussed what does pixel size really mean so darian had a discussion around that you can read this to get a better understanding i assume everyone knows what that is so this uh, post shows shows how staining techniques change how we as humans at least can view an image so this image is for hne staining and it might indicate some augmentations after this i'll actually show a package that everyone ended up using so it's called stain net which actually allows you to perform this augmentation so as you can see the to me it looks like you're actually putting on a filter to this image so again uh, i'm i'm going to annoy a few uh, doctors by saying that but it's it's like putting on putting on a filter to all of these images so that's another possible augmentation you could apply so as you change the stain across different thickness uh, that would also affect how your model is reading in these images the next i wanted to point out this notebook it's called stain normalization stain gan and stain net so inside of this uh, the author shows how you can use this and how you can apply all of these how these techniques or how stain normalization works so there is a discussion around this and there are different examples that you can use uh stain gan is based on cycle gan to transfer stain style and stain net uses stain gan as the teacher network to learn color mapping by distillation learning I assume everyone knows what these are, so I'll continue regardless. I assume everyone knows what a teacher network is, what distillation is. Actually, let me give a two-second explanation. So, uh, distillation learning is when you train a bigger model. It's called the teacher model, and you condense its learning into a smaller model. So that then becomes a student model. That is model distillation. Um, so then as you can see here are the source and targets and you would uh, potentially apply different uh, forms of staining augmentations or staining normalizations so as you can see i'm not going to pronounce this uh, these are the two options how you can normalize these images these are the conventional techniques and then there's a the deep learning based technique where you can apply a stain gan or a stain net like so now i can i can say visually which looks better i am not a doctor to me uh, this looks so here's here's my here's my take on this this looks slightly pink this looks very pink this looks very red now i don't know which is the right color here so again uh, if i was trying here i would just experiment with all of these and see which which gives a better performance and here's a better visual comparison for all of these so we're going from red to pink as you try different techniques in some way uh so that's that's the different uh techniques you could potentially apply around the staining techniques the top team mentioned how you can apply stain net or how you can uh, how strongly should you apply these techniques so i wanted to cover this ground moving on further or uh, there's also laplacian pyramid blending which is a form of data augmentation uh this is again from the same author so no i did not want to see the uploads i wanted to upload this so they furthermore cover why is this needed and how this can be helpful i'm just going to show what it looks like so you have image a and b within the same class and you can blend them like so 
again i can't visually tell if this is helpful or not but it looks like these images have literally been cut from the middle and joined together now uh let's see if they actually plot what this data augmentation looks like so you can see an example of prostate image here again it exactly looks like to me that it's been cut down the middle and both these images have joined together and we can see the same for the mask as well so you not only take the images you also account for the mask while you're trying to do this so again uh this is called the laplacian pyramid blending and i th i think it's look it looks like 50% cut mix like would would that be a sim nice simple explanation for it like you're cutting down things down the middle and then blending them together i think that's an accurate description uh so that's the laplacian pyramid blending uh data augmentation again a few models that i first heard of i am sorry if you're already familiar with this i am a uh, side note i'm working on a paper series where i'll cover the entire papers ever that have existed in computer vision and segmentation and i, I intend to start this series in about 2 or 4 weeks so i i literally cover the oldest to the most recent papers in order of significance and in order of what's what you need to know so i haven't heard of coat but if you're interested in that series please consider getting subscribed so coat was one of the first uh discussions that actually showed up here and one more model that i want to point out is seg former both of these were really popular so what i've done is i've literally just skimmed through the papers recently where am i based i am up in i am up north so i am in uttarakhand not in mumbai but if you can hear the rain that's because it's actually raining quite intensely here as well i don't know if you all can hear the rain so this is a seg former framework and uh, as you can see it's a mix of both a transformer encoder and then the decoder is just a multi layer perceptron now one thing to point out here and this should come up later in the discussions here, is whenever someone's referring to mit b5 it's a sec former encoder so sec former as i just showed i didn't expect anyone to be able to go through this image i just wanted to point out that hey there are a few transformer blocks there's a mlp in the decoder so whenever you're working with segmentation usually there's an encoder decoder architecture and this one has a transformer block and also an mlp layer if you all want the full full coverage of papers that will come later as i as i teased so whenever people are referring to mit b5 they are referring to sec former which has a hierarchical transformer encoder and a lightweight mlp decode head so b5 uh, is a variant of this that's a very high level um, overview and of course uh, this is the hugging face model hubs so you can also look at how you can use this but i'll just leave it at that so sec former was also one of the most popular uh, backbones i want to say so it's a as you can see the first module is a hierarchical transformer and this encoder extracts coarse and fine features the second one is a mlp decoder which then fuses this multi level features and predicts the segmentation mask and they furthermore point out that ffn here indicates a feed forward network uh the other model discussed heavily is coat so co80 and they've shown what coat like coat light looks like what coat light looks like and what does coat look like so these are a mix of both serial and parallel blocks and uh, both blocks enable co scale mechanism <laughs> i i i i don't think it's uh necessary to go into the details of all of these but uh some teams use coat light and some teams also use the coat architecture so just wanted to quickly show uh here's how the architecture varies 
So you have your input feature maps that go through in patch embedding layer, followed by which you feed in the image tokens, which then go through a few conv convolutional, uh, sorry, con attention layers followed by feed forward layers, and these repeat a few times. And then you have the serial block, which also feeds in the info uh, along these layers. So that's again a very high level overview. I've I've also myself just came to this paper today, so it might not be the best explanation. So that's the quote architecture, which would come up in the top uh, discussions. Then uh, there was an example on how to train the sec former. I think it's safe to skip this now. Uh, they show you how to load in the hugging face the, uh, model, and then how do you prepare the data set to work with this correctly. Uh, this was a really good baseline, and I, I assume many people started with this. And then uh, Heng also shares, always shares many insights on how to get started. So Heng had also shared how can you apply or how can you get a new record high of 0.8 LB score using code. I think I wanted to point out the comment from here. So let me let me scroll back again. They uh, they had pointed out this fine detail. Um, I d I'm sorry, I don't think it's worth covering here, but they, they pointed out a bug that uh, they had some problems with the B6 uh, encoder. So if you end up trying that, it might be worth to keep an eye out on this discussion. Again, it's titled Single Fold Code Parallel Small. Um, I can close this tab as well. And uh, I like looking at the CV versus LB discussions because these usually give you a really good idea of what different people tried. So I would, of course, and we literally started with this as well, right? We we looked at unit plus B6 for the problem we were looking at earlier, uh, which was segmenting fashion images. So that got the score of 0.59 on the leaderboard and 0.79 on uh, local CV. So as you can see, there's a nice variation. Uh, different people were using deep lab B3, B4. Um, MM segmentation. Unit 2D. I don't think I've seen that uh, in a long time. I might be wrong. Apart from that, there are discussions on how the CVLB is quite varied and everyone was worried about facing a shakeup. Uh, B4 plus deep lab. So as you can see, initially everyone was using uh, unit uh, deep lab, mostly with efficient nets. And there were a lot of discussions on how the shakeup will go, which surprisingly wasn't as, as wild as everyone was expecting. Um, yes, I wanted to point out this discussion here. So uh, it's always a good idea to train with BCE first when you're working with segmentation problems, as mentioned here. I see Nishchi in the chart. Hopefully he's working toward the gold medal. <laughs> I promise to stop teasing him after he reaches competition grandmaster. So once that happens, I can't make fun of him. Till then, I will continue doing it. We've literally built his machine and we're waiting on uh, the power supply to come in. So <laughs> I think that's why Nishche is on YouTube today because he can't train models locally. 
uh but uh, i i am sure everyone in the stream now knows nishche is india's best kagler uh, and one of the highest rank kaglers worldwide so he moved up another rank so that's awesome congrats nishche he was 18th last week now he's become 17th i'm sure he'll be in the top 10 soon um he did not like me making fun of the gold, gold joke uh so i think i think we got he's gone now um this is the comment i wanted to point out that uh there is no absolute conclusion in data science i think we end up discussing this every week uh but what they suggesting is you just need to try different examples and come with conclusions so uh this is the comment that i wanted to point out from this discussion that there is no absolute conclusion in data science everything depends on the data uh now we can finally get to the meaty bits uh which are the top discussions and i'll just quickly check in case any new solutions have been posted although i did just check before the live stream so i don't think that's changed no it hasn't so we'll be covering the second third fourth and seventh solution hopefully a few more after this if we can so the second place uh thanks hang because they uh, had shared a lot of ideas they say that actually let's i'm sorry let's also look at the leaderboard to get a feel for the scores so the highest score was 0.83 and higher is better here so second position which is a solo gold was 0.83 as well um the gold ends around 0.819 and under that hang was just one position outside of uh, gold so they got 0.819 as well just a just a minute difference and this time i don't see any familiar face in the top 10 so i'll i'll continue reading the solution so victor says in this competition the heavy encoders and large resolution worked better so i i actually read this a few times to understand what does heavy encoder mean i assume that's that's basically bigger models that's what they're referring to so they use three cnn encoders efficient b7 connex large and uh, tensorflow efficient v2l i think i should ask later why tensorflow and why not the pytorch version maybe maybe he was using uh maybe he was using tpus again i have, i have no idea and one transformer coat like medium which we just looked at uh, and hang had shared this discussion so uh, for victor coat performed as the best single model but then on sobling this performed better swin v1 and v2 performed worse so swin was recently sota and as you can see uh, it's counter intuitive but that did not perform really well the models are trained on the following resolution with five folds and they are also trained to predict organ and pixel size the auxiliary outputs help train models to more help train more robust models and pixel size calculated for resized input input resolution and change during training augmentation so uh, i assume they are referring to auxiliary outputs being the organ and pixel size so they are also forcing the models to learn the organ and pixel size and uh, he claims that this helps training more robust model and then pixel size is also being calculated as he resize the resolution so since the images were 3000 by 3000 and assume he had resized them uh, to the following size he had to recalculate the pixel size for the for all of them so next he shares the augmentations none of these really stand out i think everyone would be familiar with these he says uh, external data was really helpful so he downloaded hpa data and manually picked the images all external data was pseudo labeled and all training data was pseudo labeled and in 30% uses ground truth so he did use stain normalization as well and he used it with a 15% chance 
replacement so the probability set for the augmentation was 15% for vali- validation he says the text time augmentations were flip crop padding and external data also was trained on fools and used as validation so he used just three text time augmentations or tta you can check out the notebook i i did not go through it but i'll just uh go to the comments in case there are anything i don't see anything so we can continue further so to quickly summarize uh, for victor b7 and connext worked well coat light was the best model for some reason swim transformers weren't working nicely with this problem set and quite straightforward augmentations external data was key using stain normalization was also key here so i think the the secret sauce here is external data accurately pseudo labeling and then uh, using stain normalization let's move on to the third place solution i remember to upload this so they say uh, their team dropped some examples completely and they shared the ids but i assume they had manually gone through all of the examples and their team assumed that these lungs were not accurately uh labeled but then later on in the discussion uh some clarifications were shared so they pseudo labeled it and added it again to the training so again uh, many competitors actually manually sift through all the examples and as you can see it is most of the times quite helpful so one of the key tricks for them was to adapting to varying pixel sizes now the second team actually predicted the pixel size to take care of this and they say for them uh, the images scale from 6.3 to 0.2 so they tackled this by rescaling the trained data set and increasing the model's receptive field by applying downscalers and upscalers so i assume they downscaled uh the images that had larger resolution and upscaled the images with smaller resolution so they are also resizing and trying to get this to a common range is what i understand from here and they've also shared how they end up resizing this uh furthermore they share a few augmentation so cut mix was helpful for them the trick here was to apply cut mix only within the single organ class they say they've trained a cnn model based on 512 size and sec former on 1024 crop size sec former performed really well on the smaller size and they say for cnn the local cv went up but the lv score went down and they also sampled the non empty mask with the following probability now i i see some new heavy augmentation so geometric wasn't mentioned earlier distortion is literally distorting the images and color and scales and they say this was quite key for improving their team's performance uh to deal with the color shift they use histogram matching and they use histogram matching for all the images so they actually accounted for the change in the colors and i assume they applied some transforms to account or take care of that now that used external data from gtex and hpa portals i don't know what the gtex portal is but for them they say it was quite quite key in helping here they pseudo labeled all the external data and it scored like so they shared how did they apply the pseudo labeling and they did not select the best labels but just randomly sampled and this was done twice so they trained on three subsets the hpa training hpa pseudo labeled where they rescale the pixels 
an histogram match. This was repeated many times. Then just the HPA training fold with HPA pseudo and GTEC pseudo with pixel size rescale. So they're mixing all of these example data sets and as you can see, training models across all of these. After this, uh, they trained the following models. So unit plus plus and unit backbones with B7, MIT B5, efficient at B7. And furthermore, they apply a few variations. So they apply uh, I'm trying to understand what does X5 here mean? Does that mean they trained it for five epochs? I don't think that's possible. Five epochs is really small. Maybe X5 is five is the number of folds. I, I think that makes sense. So all of these models were trained on five folds. And it appears they did not fine tune the B5 model. They did not pre-train the B5 model. So they just downloaded the ImageNet weights and for B7, it was a noisy student pre-training for all of the efficient nets. Point rand was applied as a regularization while training for two of the efficient at B7 models, it seems. Now they claim that for them, uh, for their team, SEC formers performed better on HubMap compared to Sorry, CNNs performed better than SecFormers, but it was the opposite. And on the private data set, SecFormers outperformed CNNs. So uh, I would say SecFormer is a better choice since that's performing better on private data, at least for this competition. As we saw, uh, they've used five folds for validation and for training they've used Adam with reduce LR on plateau. So as your loss starts to plateau, you reduce the learning rate to slowly training a model. They've used a mix of all of these uh, loss functions and they predicted image by image with a batch size of one on full image size. Finally, they share that they average three checkpoints for each fold just average model weights and that use four flips TTA. So this is another pre-processing technique that they've shared. They remove small regions. So I assume if uh, a very small region is being predicted in the image, you can safely remove it and predict image in full scale. So I'm, I, I think we can come back to this discussion later to keep an eye out for the paper and the GitHub link. But to me, the key tricks here were, let's scroll back. Um, rescaling the different organ pixel sizes, then pseudo labeling different data sets. And they did this repeatedly. Uh, Furthermore, they applied some noisy student pre-training. They then for some example, they just used the direct pre-trained weights. And finally, this fine tuning trick where they removed small regions. I assume this would have also given them a good boost. And uh, one thing we learned here was uh, SEC former for this team performed really well. So that's one thing to keep in mind when working with these problems. Moving on to the fourth place solution and it's titled stain normalization is all you need. Uh, this is why I was tempted to cover that kernel, which I did. So th the fourth position relies on two stream model and some tricks on ensembling and stain normalization. Uh, they, they say they missed out on the prize because they did not use any external data. So uh, this is the first team out of the three that we've read that doesn't use any, any external data. They've used an encoder coat light with a DA former plus unit decoder. I don't know what this is. Again, I'll have to read up on this. Uh, an MIT encoder with a similar decoder and an MPVIT 
which I don't know what is. I know what V a, a VIT model is. I'm not sure if this is a simple variant of that. I'll have to check this as well. I'm sorry. I should have looked this up earlier. Uh, followed by the following decoder again. So for their team, the most important part and inference step was stain normalization. And this was to bridge the gap between HP and hub map. So now if you remember, the stain GAN allows you to apply transfer learning or cycle GANs to match the stain uh, colors, which I call very red and very pink. But that, that doesn't matter for this example. And uh, they use this technique to actually match the same. So they're using stain normalization from stain tools, which is a framework I would assume. So for training, they normalize the HPA images to the only one hub map test image. For inference, just using stain normalization in training step is not enough. And this can't transfer feature space perfectly. So they also needed to use stain normalization in inference step. In inference, they select a representative image from training images for all five organs. And they normalize them to the HP images according to their labels by using these two types of methods. So these were the traditional methods that we looked at, if you remember correctly. And then the predictions are averaged to finally predict the mass. Again, they say they'll predict, uh, they'll open source the code soon. So I'll again come back to this later. Uh, remember to check out the third and fourth position for their code. Uh, key takings mapping the or trying to match the training data with the expected private data uh, was helpful for this team where they were only provided with one example at least for creating a example submission so they mapped the input stains to that and after that uh, while running the inference they furthermore figured out how to perform normalization for all five organs and how to perform that properly. So continuing further to seventh place, the key points of this solution are strong data augmentation as well and using whole and tile images simultaneously. Now, why did they use that? Um, because if you scroll down, they only use Kaggle kernel for training. So you don't need strong hardware, even for uh, segmentation problems, which are one of the most compute demanding problems. Uh, if you are smart with the tricks, like the seventh position, uh, you can get away with just using Kaggle kernels as well. So there were nine CNN models used here. Uh, I assume efficient at B5 and convex bases were used with different models. So uh, that was my assumption. And what they've done is they've done seed averaging and some hyperparameter and way of pre-training is changed. So we looked earlier, one of the team has just used the image rate pre-trained weights. Some other had done a noisy student pre-training. I assume uh, the seventh position did something similar, but it's a hidden detail. And I think everyone's congratulating uh, them on the great finish. So for Connex, there was one class segmentation where I assume individual models were trained just for particular classes. So there were seven models doing this. And then there were multi-class segmentation models. So two models were trained for this and seven models. Different models with different seeds or different ways of pre-training would have been used, I assume, here. Uh, encoders for, so this is the best single model. B5 was the best encoder along with the unit backbone and a unit decoder. They share details of how they had resized the images. Furthermore, uh, they applied the following data augmentations. I assume these are familiar to everyone, so I'm not going to cover them. Uh, color jitter is quite interesting. It's like uh, when your old CRT TV would go out of sync. So the jitter you would get on TV screens, if you remember that, or if your HDMI cable isn't plugged correctly, the small 
small as you get color jitter basically adds that uh, that's that's a very accurate way to describe that um the models were trained on 800 by 800 size bc loss width to scree loss was used and for this team as well external data from gt ex and hub map was used he only used one slide per organ because he couldn't find out uh, if it was helping the score or not now some more key tricks here for inference he's cropping into 1900 by 1900 and how is he doing that if the size is smaller than this there's no cropping so i assume uh, let's let's say let's say this is a big image so you would crop it into two if it's a very big image you could crop it into like a cross and you would have four parts so you would cut out four squares otherwise it could be two sections and if it's a small image you don't cut it out at all so this is to make sure everything runs properly i assume in the in the kaggle environment which is quite quite slow with compute and if it's a really huge image there would have been nine crops with three by three tiles so this is how they're cropping the image uh, this has also been discussed in the tensorflow gbr competition so one of the top teams had done this there as well if i can find the competition which of course i can't so this was also done one of by one of the top teams that won with just kernels so maybe the, maybe that's a common secret between everyone winning with just kernels for this team they ensemble each model prediction with the following thresholding and the final prediction was a sum of each model prediction with the following thresholds being applied so they applied these thresholds twice and they ensemble the model like so for some reason this clipping while reading in the images boosted their score i'm i'm not sure why that was helpful maybe maybe someone with more domain knowledge could help but uh, for this team it, it seemed to give a nice boost you can close the other tabs and make sure let's let's try to we're out of time but i'll try to cover two solutions if i can so uh, this is the 11th place so uh, they say since the there was some confusion about where whether there would be a shake up or not uh, this team submitted as many times as possible to check so the key tricks here were using gtex data again uh, ensembling and using test time augmentation so very heavy test time augmentation compared to the other teams some post processing the following 12 models were trained now i think they're skipping a few details but i assume all of these models would have some variation with how they were pre trained uh, how they were applied that's being left out but as you can see unit is a popular architecture deep lab v3 plus was working nicely with connex maybe unit wasn't again one thing we need to try and learn for this team as well data size was data was resized to the following scale and for the external data they also accounted for rescaling the pixel sizes and then it was cropped randomly to this size all of this was trained on kaggle kernels or colapro which is also amazing to see again uh, one more team that managed to win another gold medal with just just public uh, resources i i say that and pause and reflect on my life decisions where i have six graphic cards and no no gold medals from them had to <laughs> had to share my embarrassment with everyone um and he was continuing further uh, they share how they had downloaded the external data sets and how he had used the pseudo labels i don't think these details are relevant so i'll continue further oh 
Oops, sorry about that. Um, so he says that uh, he could use five, sorry, eight combination patterns, but they were reduced to four because of the runtime limitation. The scales were chosen based on the training scale. So five scales into four patterns that makes 20 TTAs, or they could be different scales that could be used uh, while performing test time augmentation. So just resizing to different scale was part of the augmentation technique here, or just simple or uh, flipping or rotating by 90 degrees. This part is quite, quite counterintuitive, no? Like rotating by 90 degrees. Maybe that's helpful for segmentation because you still have the masks correctly. I think this is the only team using 90 degree rotation, so I might be wrong. Let's see for the post-processing. Uh, he says there's no clear evidence, especially for spleen or lung, but the boundary of the mask is fuzzy. So he tried to enlarge or shrink the mask and confirm the effect in LV score. As a result, shrinking spleen and lung prediction mass improved the LV score. So maybe maybe bringing in the boundaries a bit closer or maybe like uh, if it's, assuming it's a circle, you shrink the radius. However, the resulting private LB was better if he included post-processing. So next he shares how the post-processing was applied. Okay, um, for the remaining solutions, I didn't see anything interesting. So I think it's this is a nice spot to wrap up. Um, I'll again remind everyone to go to this link if you'd like to be a part of the H2 AI community that we're working on. Uh, you can find the details here or you can sign up for the early access. Everyone's invited. Uh, I don't think there will be a live stream next weekend because I'm going to watch Formula One. Uh, if anyone here is from Singapore, I'll be there and I'd love to meet you all. Although I don't think, I was looking at the stats and I didn't see anyone. So if anyone here in the live stream is from there, I'd, I'd love to meet you, meet you there. I might also do an in-person meetup there. So please uh, keep an eye out for that. I'll announce that if I get the chance. Thanks, like always, for joining me on the live stream. If you enjoy these live streams, uh, consider getting subscribed. We'll continue this every week and I'll soon uh, start putting up the videos for the paper series I had mentioned. Again, uh, thanks everyone for joining. We learned a few tricks around segmentation and in the next one, I'll try to again continue with the competition that ends then. Thank you and I'll see everyone in I think two weeks.